and then you use in in conjunction with each other, you get some really nice effects. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies, and today I'll be introducing you a, uh, a tutorial, I guess, using these products here. So these are the uh, Green Stuff World Bloods. This is the Coagulator Blood and the True Blood. So you might just see them here. There's a little sample that's already been painted. So the interesting thing about the bloods, I mean, in the past, people would just use red paint or clear red. Uh, these have actually been formulated really nicely. So they have a transparency to them, but they're not absolutely transparent like a clear red. So when you try to use clear red, it usually comes out quite thin and you use, need to use it quite heavily. This has already been uh, pre-mixed to a point where, I'll demonstrate that on the palette too. So I've got my palette here. That's already been prepared, a little wet palette. I've got our sample that's already been painted there. And then I've got uh, rough samples that I'll start from scratch. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'll show you how to paint this into the basic bony color. Uh, and then we'll start applying some of the bloods. Okay, so let me just get my goggles on. All right, so to get the, uh, the basic uh, uh, bone effect, uh, I'm gonna start with uh, all my different colors here. So we'll start with some black. Black is gonna be the first thing I'm gonna put on. It's, uh, it's basically the base which uh, a lot of miniature painters use. And the idea is this is going to give you your yeah, absolute shadow, no light at all. Okay, so complement that, we're going to have our white. This will be the base for your, your bony color. And then bone is actually not pure white, it's, it's a buffy color. And so with that, I'm going to touch a brown. Okay, so I'll just add that there. Okay, that's probably a bit more brown than we really need. But it's, it's okay. We'll just keep it there. All right, let's, let's mix this up. Got my little container of water here for cleaning up and, and changing consistency of the paint. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is base paint in the black. All right, so we've got the black here. Touch of water there, we'll just mix it down so it's a nice brushing consistency. Okay, so I've got my, my spine and the skull here. So let's go ahead and paint. All right, so I'm going to really concentrate in all these crevices because that's basically where you want it to stay, a darker tone. And we'll just do this really quickly. Now this uh, skull and spine have already um, primed uh, with some white primer. I mean, if you've got some black primer, that'll basically skip this step altogether because you're toning it all in one shot. All right, getting into all the nooks and crannies. I'm just using a wider brush here, it just saves a lot of time. Okay, see that, it's pretty much a bit hard to see now, the black on the black. But that's probably a good sign too, because you'll be able to see all the, uh, the bone tone coming up as I get into it. Okay. Put this on a clip. Just clip it on like that. Okay, so that's it all base coated in the black. And while that's drying, it's gonna take a little bit of time, I'll start mixing up the bone color. So 
So this is just going to go through the uh, the three steps of uh, uh, painting as well, because basically what you want is base coat, shadows, and then highlights. So this method is doing the black, so it's doing the shadows first. Another method of doing it would be you do your base coat of um, bone color or ivory, and then you do the black wash, and then you do your um, dry brushing of the highlights. So I'll show you how to do that method in another video. Okay, so it's black. It's going to take a little bit more time. Let's mix up some bony color. Okay, so let's get the white here. And just a very small touch of brown. Don't need a lot of it. You see how that's already influenced the color. Actually, there's still a bit of black in here, which probably I don't want. Touch more brown. So you see how quickly that brown changes everything? That's really overdone it now, which means I'll need a bit more white. Now you could also add a bit of yellow too, if you like, if you want that, that sort of more golden color. But I think that's a pretty good mid-tone because we're going to highlight this as well with some more dry brushing or just straight white. Okay, so we've got a buffy color there. Okay, now let's have a look at this. It's still a bit wet. So what I'll do is, rather than wait a few more minutes for it to be totally dry, I'll start painting it now. With the wet parts that are black here, what you'll see, it'll start wet blending as well. It's probably not gonna be the easiest thing to do because it's, the black is going to tarnish this particular buff color. But I'll show you what you can do. You can get some really nice effects too. It can be quite smooth. So let's just get that off here. Oh, I think there's some areas I've missed there with the black. Just quickly do those. Okay. All right, so that's where I'm starting to dry brush the top. Now you see as I'm going over it is wet blending. So you see that's just, it's turning into a slightly gray, which isn't a bad thing. And you'll notice that I'm using a broad brush and I wipe most of the paint off it. So that's how I'm being able to, you just gently drag it across the top surface and it'll bring up the highlights. Because what we want is the really deep shadows to still be black. That gives you the really high contrast. Okay, so you've got a bit of... Alright, so you can see there, so it's slowly coming up. It's coming up slower than you would normally if the black was fully dry because of the wet blending. But this is going to end up looking a bit smoother. So we'll just continue doing exactly the same thing. Just continue adding a bit of this. So again, the brush isn't fully loaded and you're only using the tips of the bristles across the surface. And it's just picking up on the higher section, so is it bringing out the highlights. Let's see if I can move this so it's a bit easier to see the angle it's at at the moment. So, like so. So you can see some definition now coming through. So we'll just continue doing this.
Let's use a little bit of a, a slightly lighter tone. So this is quite a slow process. You can do it quicker if you um, use a slightly thicker paint and you allowed everything to, to dry absolutely perfectly. But this will give you a, a much better idea of how it all comes about slowly. And you'll see how the tones are just slowly changing as I go over. And this tends to happen when you start with a black base because it does take quite a bit of um, effort to cover the black, but you get those really deep shadows in the sockets as you can see already, and it's already adding so much depth. All right, so you can see it's just picking out slowly, slowly. It's coming out from the blackness. All right, so that's probably about mid-tone now. Very nice to go for some straight white now. Mix with a touch of the brown. Okay, so you can definitely see the skull shape coming through, the spine, all those bones picking out. All right, so it's probably looking like a mid, a mid gray at the moment. We want to get it a bit more pure. We'll just keep adding. This is straight white now. Okay, there you go, there's your basic bony color. I mean, of course you can make that more yellow if you like. So this example here is a bit more yellow. This is more pure white. And actually, I'll just show you quickly how you can do that. Let's just get a touch more white on our palette. Touch of yellow. Okay, and to, to tone the white, you don't need a lot of the yellow. So again, just a touch. Okay, that's probably a bit too far. And tone it down, change that yellow, just a touch of brown. So start getting a slightly orangey tone. Still a touch to yellow, a bit more white. 
and you just mix it up until you get that sort of ivory tone that you like. Okay, and then we'll just do the same thing, dry brush across the top. Okay, so now you've got a slightly yellow tone to it. Alright, let's just do a quick another coat. Okay. So there you go, so there you go. That's your, your bony colour. Pretty simple. So you can quite easily change this method to any sort of tone that you like. But that's a general idea there. Okay, so from here, if you want to give some extra uh, emphasis to uh, the shadows, you can do a wash on it now. We've got those really deep sockets which are totally black already. But what I think I'll do now is I'll show you how the blood works. So that's the main focus of this. All right, so here I've got the true blood. I'll just mix it up. So you can hear the ball bearing just bouncing back and forth. So it needs a reasonably good shake. And then we'll pop it down over here. So you can see the blob there, it already looks like real blood. So I just get rid of this? bit of gunk that ended up there. And then here's the coagulated blood. So true blood is meant to resemble blood as it's just come out of a wound. So it's still really bright red. And the coagulated blood is meant to look like drying blood after it's come out and you can see how much darker it is there. Now just to give you an idea of what the effect looks like, if I start spreading this across the, uh, the palette, I see as you apply a thinner amount, it's got that transparency to it. And then when you add a bit of water, there's a further transparency. Same with this one. So like so. So you can see how quite heavy, it's got a lot of pigment in it. And then as you bring it out, it's got that transparency. So that's how they've formulated to make it look like real blood. So, all right, let's go on here. What shall we do? Let's use a lighter tone first and just do a bit of sporadic blood. So let's do it around. So there is on this. Okay, so there's a straight blood applied and then we can add just a touch of water here and it'll, it'll thin it off a bit. And if it's a bit too heavy, you can actually thin it while it's there and you can bring it back a bit. Okay, like so. Now if we go with the coagulated blood, and we just put it across here, you'll see the contrast difference in the color. So it's slightly deeper. Do it on this side. And over here. So with a combination of the two, you get all these different blood tones. I use a bit of water to, to thin it off. And 
you apply it quite heavily too if you want. And basically if you get really thin stuff like this, it acts like a wash. So this will basically just stain the whole area. So you paint that all the way over. So there you go. I mean, I've probably done a bit of a mess of it because I've been so quick. But this is how easily you can use this blood you see it at the moment, it's still a bit wet, but it's, it's going to remain this sort of glossy finish. So this is one that's been done earlier. You can see how that's had blood and such flicked onto it. And there you go. So that's the blood. So this one here, the brighter one, this is the true blood. And the darker one, that's the coagulated blood. So let's just try this again. You see that, that's quite heavy. Slap it on here. So you put it on really thick. And as it pulls back, it's, it's got that really thick, gunky, bloody appearance. All right, so that's a heap of the coagulated blood. And then if we do a heap of the true blood, yep. you see the slight tone difference there. Bit more scarlet, bit more pink. And then you use in, in conjunction with each other, you get some really nice effects. So that's it, simple as that. So that is my tutorial on how to use the green, uh, green stuff blood effects. So there's true blood and there's coagulated blood. And just quickly, I showed you how to do the, uh, the quick dry brushing on how to get that sort of bony uh, effect as well. So starting with the, the totally black base and then moving on to a, a sort of a, a buffy color and then a, a highlight um, white as well for the bone. So there you go. Thank you for watching. If you have any uh, questions about the technique just uh, put some uh, comments down below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. So thanks for watching.